Hello and welcome back to my channel, Ritz Gifted Hands. I'm super excited that you're here. Now that I've got your attention, let's get straight to this video. Today's going to be an exciting one because I'm going to be talking about my top 10 fall fragrances. This is going to be in collaboration with the beautiful Deborah Day. I'm going to go ahead and leave a link to her YouTube channel and her Instagram down below in the description section. Please go ahead and check her out. So before I begin this video, I want to go ahead and just tell you guys my great appreciation for the fall season. Autumn and fall have to be my favorite season out of the four seasons. So if you're fortunate to be in a place where you have four seasons, then you already know that fall is when the summer's ending and it starts to get a little bit cooler. It's not as cold as when the winter hits. The trees start to change their colors and the leaves start to wither. It's just beautiful autumn colors out there. You have the orange hues, you have the browns, uh, pumpkin lattes, everything spice. This is just my favorite season, guys. So I could talk on and on and on about why I love the fall and why it's my favorite season, but I don't want to digress. I'm going to get straight into this video, guys. I've been waiting for the seasons to get cooler because I think most of the fragrance I own are for the cooler seasons. In all honesty, it was really hard picking just 10 because I have so, so many. But I'm just going to go ahead and talk about the ones I've been longing to wear. So first on my list is Serica Jessica Parker Stash. This one is a gem. A lot of people don't know about it. I accidentally got this from Ulta um, one Christmas, I believe. I ordered some things online and um, I happened to get this one because it came in a set. It had the elixir, like the elixir oil, and it also had this fragrance in it. And I purchased it. And then I was going to return it because I didn't think I was going to like it. And when I smelt it, it just smelled so different from anything I had smelt before. Mind you, this was before I started collecting fragrances. So this had to have been about two Christmases ago. But this one right here is a really, really good one. It has niche qualities to it. It smells more expensive than it actually cost. And it's got a lot, a lot of notes in it. I'm going to tell you some of the notes it has right now. The top notes are grapefruit zest, black pepper, and aromatic sage. The heart notes are cedarwood atlas, patchouli, ginger, lily, and pistachios. And the base notes are olibanum, masia wood, vetiver, and musk. And basically, Sarah Jessica Parker says with this fragrance, she was all about taking risks and expressing a more knowing, confident, sophisticated version of herself. I think she really did that with this because this doesn't smell like any of her prior fragrance. She really outdid herself with this one. And if you've not tried this one, you definitely want to get your hands on it. Now I'm going to talk about this one, and this is just going to be an honorable mention. This one is called Adam Levine. He has two kinds. There's one for males and there's one for the female. This one is the one for women. And this one is actually basically like the junior brother to this fragrance. It smells quite identical, but just on a lighter, more sparkly note. I think you can get this for less than 15 or between 15 to $20. So if you can't get your hands on the other one and you like sandalwood, then you wanna go ahead and get this one. This one is sandalwood heavy. Stash can be a little bit hard to get your hands on sometimes, so I use that fragrance sparingly. So whenever I'm in the mood for a stash and I'm not going out or I'm not going somewhere where I need to wear something heavy, I'll wear this one. Or sometimes I layer it with stash. And I also have the elixir like I mentioned earlier, so I can use the oils and put it in my pulse points and then I use this one as a fresher on top of that. So there's so many things you can do with this one, but this one is a gem all by itself, so try and pick it up if you can. Next on my list is YSL's Black Opium. You guys I'm sure already have heard or know about this fragrance, but in case you don't, it's warm and it's spicy, it's also a gourmand. Um, is described to be a seductively intoxicating fragrance. So the notes of this one are black coffee, white flowers, and vanilla. If you guys have been watching my videos, you know that I've been on the fence with this one for a very long time. The only reason I don't like this one is because it doesn't last on my skin. The fragrance itself is nice. So what I have decided to do is to give it to my sister. And now I'm showing you this one because this is the one that I would be duping this for. So I've gone ahead to record a dupe video for you guys and that's going to be coming out later this week. So be on the lookout for that video. But in that video, I'm going to be breaking these two fragrances down a little bit more for you guys. But this 
Zara Gardenia is a gem and it's gonna stay in my collection and I'm not gonna miss Black Opium. Now I'm going to move on to the next fragrance and that one is, of course you guys already know. This is Carolina Herrera's Good Girl and this one is a complex, intoxicating, very seductive fragrance. This is one of the ones that got me starting my fragrance journey if I'm being honest. I walked by the counter, I was intrigued by the shoe. I sprayed it and I actually liked it. I went ahead and bought the one ounce bottle and when I took it home, I realized I like it more than that. So I wanted to get the bigger bottle and I was on the fence on what to do with the other one. But I ended up giving it to my younger sister. Even my mom admires this bottle. She loves the shape of the shoe. I had to tell her that it wasn't age appropriate and that was I think about the time when I got her Chanel number five. But this one right here is a gem and I feel like every woman should have it in their collection. If not for any reason, just for the shape of the shoe. I feel that this one will be very appropriate for fall nights out. Next on my list is Tresor's La Nuit. And this one right here is a gem. It even looks like a diamond. I love everything about this fragrance, down from the bottle to the juice and the inside of it. This one is considered a florental. It's also gourmand and woody. It's got notes of raspberry, frankincense, vanilla, and black rose essence. This one is also described as being sultry and smoldering. It's got a lot of mystery to it. It's got sweetness to it. It's got sophistication. This one right here is simply amazing and I'm so glad that fall is finally here so I can start to wear it again. Next on my list is from the same house and this one is Lancome Tresor Midnight Rose. I'm actually starting to see a trend here because this one also has the ombre gradient effect going on and it's absolutely gorgeous. Now, the juice on the inside is absolutely beautiful. This one is said to be charming, mischievous, and desirable. This one has got notes of raspberry, rose, vanilla, and sensual musk. This one is truly, truly breathtaking, and it will be good for nights out also. And as you can see, we're on a roll. I've got another one from the house of Lancome, and this one is Lancome Levias Belle Le Clark. And this one is a stunner. Look at this gorgeous multifaceted bottle. This one is sensual and addicting. I actually prefer it to the original Levia's Bell, although it can be layered with that one and it can be worn all day. This one has got notes of iris, orange blossom, and vanilla bean. I have plans to wear this a ton this season. Next on my list is Velvet Orchid by Tom Ford. I would describe this one as being a younger sister to the Tom Ford's Black Orchid. This one is described to be brilliant, lavished, and refined, is described to also live in the Black Orchid world of glamour and mystique, sharing its aura, yet standing apart with its own compelling identity. That describes it perfectly. This one is um, a little bit lighter, not as dark and as deep as Black Orchid, and that's why I prefer it for fall, and then I prefer the Black Orchid for winter. This one is smoother, is not as harsh, and this one is really, really enjoyable on the skin, and I actually love it so much that um, I've been longing for fall to come so I can wear it. Next on my list is Elisa, Girl of Now. Now let's just take a moment and admire this beautiful, gorgeous bottle. This fragrance is sweet and slightly syrupy. It's considered to be an oriental floral and it's got pistachio tonka bean and orange blossom in it. I had been waiting for the cooler months because it was one of my most recent acquisitions and it was a little bit too sweet for the summer. So I'm so glad I'm getting a chance to rock it now. Speaking of recent acquisitions, this will have to be my most recent and is the newest one to my collection. I actually like it so far. I'm looking forward to wearing it more in the fall, but this one has got coffee and violet, which is a surprising combination. Some people describe it as being similar to black opium, but I feel that this is a sweeter version and it definitely lasts a lot longer. So I'm definitely going to be rocking it and giving you my two cents on it as we progress into the fall. Last but not least is Marc Jacobs Decadence and this one is a remarkable masterpiece. And I say that because all of the fragrance that Marc Jacobs had produced prior to this were more on the fresh and floral 
or juvenile side but this is the first mature fragrance that he made in 2015. This one is considered to be woody, balsamic, floral, powdery, and earthy. The top notes are Italian plum, saffron, and iris, while the heart notes are Bulgarian rose, sandbag jasmine, and orris root. And the base notes are warm liquid ember, vetiver, and papyrus wood. This one is a gem. The combination is intoxicating. It lasts a very long time on the skin. Some people don't like the shape of the bottle and the tassel, and they think it's a little bit over the top. I actually like it. The bottle itself, the 100ml bottle, is actually bigger than it looks. And overall, this is a fantastic fragrance, and I'm so happy to have it in my collection and to rock it this fall. So this wraps up my video. Thank you for watching this video all the way to the end. I sure hope you enjoyed it. I also want to use this opportunity to thank Deborah Day for collabing with me on this video. And for everyone who is coming from her channel, thank you for stopping by. I do hope that you join the family. And if you're watching my video, please don't forget to head over to her channel and show her some love. If you haven't liked this video, go ahead and hit the thumbs up right now. And if you haven't joined this family, go ahead and smash the subscribe button right now. In this family, you are definitely loved. And most importantly, go ahead and leave a comment down below letting me know which of these fragrances you plan on trying and which of the ones you have in your collections that you plan on wearing this fall. I love you guys as always. Please remember to be safe out there. Catch up on video. Love you. Bye. Bye.